Okay, then uh, next up is Albert Ludwig Reune from the National Archives of Estonia. And the talk is entitled Unorthodox Structures, Peter Pala on Orthodox Birth Registers. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, yes, hello, my name is Albert. I come from the National Archives of Estonia. And I'm here to talk about on our project with, uh, uh, with Orthodox Birth Registers. And the focus here uh, is on our work with the layout analysis tool P2PALA. Uh, but uh, as we are on the second day of this conference, and on the first day, we already had some uh, fantastic presentations about uh, uh, the technology of P2PALA and also the workflows of working with uh, transcribers. So I try to repeat as little as possible and also trying to bring uh, my experience uh, with Transcribus as a historian. And this, uh, this presentation could have an alternative headline title, uh, uh, like uh, historians first double with, uh, with uh, Transcribus. Uh, and as a historian, you can't go uh, without a historical background. And uh, maybe it's interesting to know, as we are working with um, Orthodox uh, materials, uh, Estonia is not uh, historically uh, Orthodox uh, uh, area. Uh, Estonia and, and Latvia are historically uh, Lutheran areas uh, fully uh, all the way until the 19th century. Uh, in early 1940s, there were a few bad harvests. And when there's a bad harvest, uh, people start to think about uh, social and political reforms. And uh, some rumors started to sp uh, spread from Riga around the country, uh, around the areas of Latvia and Estonia, that uh, maybe joining the Orthodox Church, maybe joining the Tsar's faith, uh, we could get some land. And what is more attractive to landless peasants than land, for example? And, um, and uh, so in these Orthodox uh, sources, uh, we have the more uh, poorer part of the peasantry in these uh, church records. And uh, during these uh, large, two larger uh, mass movements uh, in 1840s and 1880s, uh, up to uh, one third of the population uh, changed their, their uh, uh, faith, religion. Uh, nothing really practical came out of it uh, land-wise. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, uh, only actor that got some land was Orthodox Church. So in nowadays in Estonia, beautiful countryside, there is there are also many uh, beautiful uh, Orthodox churches. Uh, and ten plus years ago, uh, our, our great uh, volunteers uh, who are working with us uh, were uh, with uh, we have a great uh, partnership with the archive. Uh, started to make this kind of a database of uh, Lutheran parishioners. Uh, so uh, name indexes of the, of the names found in the uh, Lutheran, uh, Lutheran um, uh, church records. And uh, this uh, wonderful project has some, some great results in, the, in that sense, that if I'm searching for a 19th century Estonian peasant, then uh, most of the cases I can find the family tree of that peasant from some of the more popular uh, family history websites. So, so the work uh, of the family historians uh, uh, has been really great with uh, Lutheran parishioners. Now, if I'm searching for Orthodox people, uh, then uh, more often than not, they, are, they do not exist. Uh, the records of uh, Orthodox parishioners are still uh, stuck in the archives. Uh, the family historians uh, uh, have not embraced the Orthodox uh, records um, as well as, as the Lutheran ones. And the reason is that uh, the Orthodox uh, records um, are a bit more difficult. The language is pre-revolutionary Russian and, uh, and uh, the uh, names uh, are are hidden in in a, in a larger text block, and in our project we are dealing with uh, with uh, with the uh, with the uh, Orthodox records from 1838 until 1926, when the when the registers had a uh, 
um, pretty standard um, uh, structure. Here, here you can see on the right side, where is there is a uh, date of birth, date of baptism, uh, child's name, and the information on parents. Uh, and uh, before 1838, the records uh, are in, in a different structure. And in this sense, uh, focusing on this other type of structure uh, is, uh, has been beneficiary and also in that sense, uh, that as, I, as I said earlier, uh, Estonians uh, moved to Orthodox Church in 1840s. So before, before that, uh, these Orthodox materials um, uh, are, are more about uh, Russian merchants and soldiers uh, in Estonia and Latvia. And uh, the name, source name, uh, birth registers is not correct. In these birth registers, uh, there are also lists of baptized people. And here we can see the, the mass movement indeed in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, movement. Uh, so, uh, so in the smaller uh, parishes in the, in the countryside, uh, the, the sources begin with these kinds of large lists of, uh, of newly joined uh, parishioners. Uh, again, making it uh, uh, another kind of uh, structure, although the structure, structure is the same, uh, the, uh, the data inside of it is, uh, is a different. And uh, when I first started to work with the uh, transcribers, uh, my idea was that, uh, that uh, you do the HDR model and you are done. Uh, life is easy after that. Uh, and uh, indeed, that was the funnest part of this project, uh, working with the HDR. At first, we made our own own model that uh, was, uh, the CER was uh, 2% or something like that. Uh, and uh, last year, uh, people from the Freiburg University contacted us as they were working on a generic Russian handwriting model. And so, so in that uh, general model, uh, is also our model inside of it. So if uh, in most cases, maybe people are using general models as their base models to build uh, on top of that, then uh, we are using the, the general model because one of the base models in the, of that general model uh, is our, our materials and uh, it, it, it works really well. So no, no problems there really. Uh, but uh, yeah, as we know, when the text recognition is done, or the, or the HDR uh, is uh, at the acceptable level, uh, the work does not end there. So uh, we found out uh, that uh, we will have a real, real challenges with the with the layout uh, layout uh, of the uh, of these documents. And uh, our uh, as we as we started this project uh, early two thousand and twenty then uh, the best uh, tool in transcribers uh, to battle these kinds of uh, horrors uh, was, uh, was a layout analysis tool called P2PALA. And so we started to work on uh, with that and uh, uh, with uh, two specific uh, text regions. On the blue, uh, we have a child's name and on the red, we see uh, parents' information. Uh, just very basic, uh, basic uh, text, reg text regions with baselines, and uh, try to work uh, with um, uh, with P P two Pala uh, with that. And uh, and if uh, with uh, HDR uh, you need uh, you need ten to ten to fifteen pages of transcribed text to get the machine going. Uh, with P2 Pala, it was known uh, from the start that uh, it would be not so that easy. It would maybe take uh, 100 or 200 uh, pages to really get some good results. Uh, but uh, here, for example, in this picture, we can see that uh, about uh, uh, 300 pictures, 300 pages thin, uh, still the results uh, uh, were far from ideal. So. Uh, uh, so the problem was specifically uh, in in the in the baseline detection, and uh, and our final semi-working and stable P two Pala model uh, required finally to teach thirty thousand pages. Uh, our uh, our materials uh, we have uh, those Orthodox birth registers we have uh, uh, two hundred thousand pages of them. So about 7% of the, of the materials we had to curate 
beautifully uh, to get some sort of a uh, uh, working working and uh, almost trustworthy P2 Pala model. <clears throat> and uh, after that, the last model, uh, uh, life seemed like, uh, like uh, great. Because as we, we see, this was the first, uh, first pages with the new model and everything worked. Amazing. Uh, after 30,000 pages, you kind of uh, are losing hope maybe. And this was a really, really great, uh, great surprise for us. And uh, as we went through the pages, everything seemed fine. Uh, but, uh, but still about uh, uh, five to 10% of the pages had some really weird errors like here shown uh, where baseline detection completely fails uh, for out of no real reason that I, could, I, can, I can explain or, or, or think about. And, uh, and so uh, again, uh, we had to come together, think about uh, what to do because this, uh, although uh, 90 to 95% of the pages are uh, correct maybe, uh, then uh, still having five to ten percent of these kinds of uh, layouts uh, are unacceptable. Uh, uh, as we have uh, family names, for example, in the middle of the textbook, and if the middle and if the specifically the middle lines are not uh, with correct layout, then uh, those pages are just a waste of space, nothing else. And so we had to really think about how to battle this this uh, this this error, and. Uh, and uh, this is the part where a historian uh, pressed open first time the XML button to see what is in there. And uh, XML is very clean. Uh, you can see baseline points. And we know that uh, uh, our problem is with the baseline points and there are some numbers, coordinates, uh, maybe we should uh, uh, do something about it. And so we started to theorize uh, with these uh, coordinates, we can uh, calculate some kind of a, a default uh, length of a baseline, and uh, if uh, we and with that we can recognize uh, two short uh, baselines, and uh, two knowing uh, where in which pages there are some really uh, awful uh, layout uh, layouts, but. Uh, this is also the limit of uh, historians' abilities. So we contacted uh, our digital archives, uh, explained what we want, and, uh, and uh, really uh, got more than I could have ever expected. And so uh, here is one part of the, uh, of the, uh, of the code uh, to, uh, with the goal to, uh, uh, to recognize the two short uh, uh, of uh, baselines, uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, code uh, helped us uh, uh, with our workflow uh, very uh, very uh, very well because uh, with this uh, with this code uh, we could uh, actually skip some of the some of the pages that we knew for sure that uh, they had no errors inside, but unfortunately uh, the the pictures of those uh, registers are from old microfilms and their position is uh, sometimes different. Their re resolution is different. So this method did not apply to all of the, all of, uh, all of those, uh, all of those materials. So, so at the end, uh, we still uh, had to unfortunately do too much, uh, uh, hand-made curation with these uh, structures. And uh, the most workable solution inside Transcribus was uh, uh, P2PALA for text regions. Uh, it was uh, amazing to see that the text, re the text regions uh, were spot on. But uh, the real problem with P2PALA was uh, with baselines. And so baselines, we used uh, SITLAB Advanced also in, the, in Transcribus. So the working solution here inside Transcribus was in two different parts of the same uh, software. And uh, it gave us optimism for the future because 
So in the last two years, we have seen uh, transcribers uh, 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 progressing. And uh, really, uh, we are seeing some new tools that uh, we would have wished uh, were there two years ago. And of course, listening to yesterday's uh, uh, presentations, the optimism is, uh, is great. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, on October, we are publishing our read and search platform. Uh, it's our first time then uh, show, showcasing our materials for the uh, larger public. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, questions. Yes, uh, let's see if there are any questions from the audience. Anything you would like to know or ask? the speaker well, i cannot imagine that there is uh, there would be any questions i can say that uh, i did not cry during this process i mean uh there is one question from me uh have you already noticed the new trainable baseline uh, feature yes okay have you tried it out too uh, yes uh, we have done some testing and uh, it's still quite uh, Still requires some work for, for it. Okay, yeah, sure. It won't be perfect, but uh, did it improve your situation? Do you think no, it could? No. It wasn't, uh, wasn't better than the combination uh, that you were using before? Okay, good, because that can solve some problems that are to do with, with baselines. Um, and yeah, for, for uh, structure recognition, there will be trainable layout uh, uh, recognition for that too. So, um, but this is probably going to take another couple uh, of, yeah, months, I think. So towards the end of the year, and you can give that a try too. Maybe that will help with the structural part. But yeah, really impressive what you've been doing. And yeah, let's hope that you, it will find a lot of users too. Cool. So thanks again and... Of course, you get a transcribers mark too.